Well, hi, everyone. Um, welcome yet again to another um, Sewing the Natter. Now, this week we are joined by, obviously, the lovely Kim Solomon, who's been my uh, wingman for the last, gosh, it's been a, quite a few weeks, Kim. Has... <laughs> and <laughs> kick us into touch. <laughs> <laughs> and we are also joined by the fabulous um, Sarah Payne. Um, how are you, Sarah? I'm good, thank you, darling. How are you guys doing? Yeah, not too bad. I do have to apologise for the slightly darker. It was nice and sunny before, but it has done. And we've tried various different things, big lights and all sorts and all fails. So if I'm a little bit dark today, it doesn't really matter. Um, so um, this week's um, sewing bee, I'm just reading my notes, um, was uh, fashion icons. Now, I was actually quite excited about this one when it said fashion icons and then it sort of got a bit mixed towards the very end but we'll talk about that in a minute but we've got some um announcements to make so the winner of last week's um giveaway um is the lovely elizabeth lamb who's won some visaline um products and so if you just want to private message um either kim or myself uh, we will make sure um that we get your address over to visaline so they can send you your goodies and kim what's uh, this week's um giveaway well i was a, i try and match up the product with what what's actually happened on the show and this week i think i'm just going to get sent out some general dressmaking products um particularly because on the last challenge i think they could have done with maybe a little bit of help with the hems and they could have done a little bit of help with structuring of the lapels but yes so we'll, we'll put together some nice fleecy items one thing I can do is please can I apologise um, to anybody who's still waiting for their previous giveaways. They will be sent out next week. It's been a combination. Really, I'm just going to take the whole blame, Alistair. I'll take complete blame. Um, so, yes, so we'll get that sorted for next week. So anybody who hasn't received theirs, they will all be coming out next week. And don't forget, everybody, if you want to be in chance for next week's giveaway, which, of course, is semi-final week, then all you have to do is like and share um the youtube channel and leave a comment let us know what you think now we're joined by the lovely sarah so where can we find you sarah oh i'm i'm all over the place i really am but just <laughs> google sarah payne quilter and you'll you'll find me yeah i've got a website sarahpayne.co.uk and then um i hang out far too much on facebook and instagram i haven't tried threads yet that's mm. what I don't know if you guys have. I'm kind of staying away from that one at the moment, but uh, but we'll see. But yeah, Instagram, uh, YouTube, just Sarah Payne Quilter and, and I turn up. <laughs> very, very good. And can we catch you at any events this year? Yes, I'm going to be at Festival of Quilts this year at the beginning of August. I'm very excited. I've been invited to... Um, uh, be uh interviewed i'm going Ooh. to be an audience with on the thursday i think it's at four o'clock in the smaller lecture theater with wendy gardner asking me lots of probing questions um which could be interesting i promise i won't tell any of your two secrets as long as the fiver's in the post well okay? you do know you do know that i will be at festival of quilts because i'm teaching lots of classes there and no, i'm in the lounge of that theater just to make sure alistair that she doesn't talk about us well, I'm the also going to have a stand uh, sorry I'm also going to have a stand there which is going to have a chaise so if you do need a rest I will definitely need a rest yeah as long as I drink my <laughs> coffee black no sugar just bring a no cup problem. come and join yep. me no problem at all <laughs> and the thing is I've shared a green room with you guys for many many years now so I've seen everybody at their best and worst not mentioning any <laughs> names. Um, so this week was um, the quarter final and the pattern challenge um, was a take on a um, Givenchy um, Audrey Hepburn style um, dress. And they were given, uh, was it four or four and a half hours? I think it was four. Well, it was four. it's not. It, they said four hours, but actually in the, um, the you know, when Sarah Pascoe, she... Um, winds it all up she actually said five hours so we don't know for four to five hours it was still it's never a lot of time is it really for what they had to do no no so the 
one thing I have to point out, which we point out every week, and Sarah, when we were doing this um, for the original um, Creating Craft, um, you'll know this. The sample. the sample was absolute. Well, it wasn't absolutely awful. I can't say that. However, when they were critiquing about the seam where you know the invisible zip mm-hmm. was, they even pointed to it, and, it's and, like and it was yeah, it was it was so off. It was it so. Again, um, if that's the benchmark for sewing against, I don't think anyone should have been criticised for any of the seams on the invisible zip actually not actually matching because the actual um, Oracle one didn't actually match. Mm -hmm. Um, So that's what I put um, down. And I also put down, um, obviously, when they were doing all the turning through, some of them weren't even, didn't even put um, any stabiliser onto the fabric mm-hmm. around that collar and every mm-hmm. single one of them on one of the bowed. um back pan- it bowed but the judges didn't pick up on any of that one side i think there might have been a problem with the pattern because one yeah. side was lovely and flat the other side on all of them even mm-hmm. um asthmas was ski whiff so i didn't really get mm-hmm. that and one of my big bugbears when you actually saw um the the outfits all lined up when they're doing that um, line of um, ruching, they got them to ruch it before they stitched the side seams up. And I'm thinking, mm-hmm. no, you stitch the side seams up, then you ruch it. But you always make sure you put a notch where your centre front was, because if you noticed on a lot of them, the dresses were pulling to one side. And that's because the ruching was um, more on one side than it was on the other. So they didn't necessarily pay attention to that, but the judges didn't pick that up. Anyway, We'll start with Sarah. What did you think? <laughs> just, it, everything that I've just written down. Oh, right. Sorry. <laughs> I, was, I was concerned about the pattern because mm. that neck piece, when they'd done the burrito, as you say, and pulled it through, they were all bowing slightly at the back, every single one of them. Now, if you've got that on all five and you've got it on the sample, that says to me there's a problem with the pattern. Um, in which case, where do they even start from? Um, now, myself, you guys are very, you know, you're professional. Alistair, you're a professional dressmaker and dressmaker designer. I'm a hobbyist. I make, I, I do a lot of quilts and everything, but my background in dressmaking is for myself and occasionally a relative. Um, but I have to rely on a pattern. I have to rely on the notches. I have to rely on that uh, and accept that that pattern is going to be correct. And I was surprised that all of them had the same error and nobody picked up on that and like you say I think that was actually it must have been the pattern and I did I wrote down here waist doesn't line up on the sample um, and the zip didn't match at the top and they actually pointed at that and said this needs to line up but (laughs) there we go they all had what I called the back wobbles Mm -hmm. so that's what I that's what I described it there um can we talk about the judging on that one? <laughs> because on. I was I was a little bit I was a little bit surprised that Tony came so low. They sort of pulled him up on the fact that he sewed the lining in by machine, but then two people who came above him, which was um, Vicky, hang on, what was it? Vicky and Maya, they didn't sew in the lining at all. So it's almost like they penalised him for machine sewing didn't penalise them for not sewing at all. And I think that sometimes with the judging this year and possibly last year as well, I felt that it's better not to do it or they consider it better not to do it than to um, do it your own way Mm -hmm. because he got it it stitched. And, okay, there's a tiny little pucker um, and they, they marked him down above people who didn't even really try and hand sew it so that annoyed I I just found myself bristling at that because I think they do tend to have a bit of a dig at Tony and I I quite Mm. like Tony I want him to live next door to me he's cool well I I (laughs) slightly do agree with you in that sense one thing that I just picked up uh, that I picked up on when um, Esme and um, Patrick were um, talking about the side seams where they had actually sewn it together where it was quite in Patrick's words it's quite bouncy I'm sorry, but there is no amount of pressing 
that will mm. get that out. Now, the difference is that when Sir Patrick obviously is coming from a tailoring point of view because he owns a, a tailoring house. Now, when I was on Savile Row, the amount that you can fix with an iron on wool is amazing. So, for instance, when you add heat and steam to uh, wool, it shrinks it. So it will make it go really flat. You can't do that with um, silk satin. The tension was um, slightly wrong. And again, I think they were literally just pulling um, that work through. And a lot of yeah. some of them were using walking feet. Um, others just just weren't. So and a slightly larger stitch as well would have helped with that um i think so i i just i just think yeah i i i actually found the judging quite um quite challenging myself in terms of where they were actually going because i actually wrote down obviously i knew that asthma was going to win um lauren was bottom but i didn't really believe that um that tony got as such a hard deal and then the, all the other criticism as well it was supposed <laughs> to hark back to hollywood um icons and it was to look like an audrey hepburn so some of the pattern choices that they they chose uh, for instance the the orange and red one that really what i didn't think that fitted the brief per se um but then again that's 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 color choice and um, but yeah. I don't think and we're not going to go there. No, no, no. We won't start <laughs> around the bar No, no. So obviously that's the we argument have... we have every year, isn't it? Is it design but, yeah. that they're judging on? Is it personal taste? Yeah. Is it the quality of your sewing? And I think they, it, it, well, we have we have our opinions on which should be given mm. more weight. Um, but we're I not think, judging. Um, I think this one particular. And, and Mark actually enlightened us a little bit last week is that they have a box full of sewing feet and they also have all of that haberdashery and they're not educated in how they can use it. So straight away, the sample obviously was never used, in, uh, never used interfacing. And so therefore the contestants never used the interfacing. Going on to design, and I'm going to skip right to the very end, on that smoking jacket, I thought Mia did an amazing job and she actually came up with her own design, which is what they're always banging on about, you know, we want something original, we want something unusual. And yet, to a degree, she was penalised because it was her own design and it didn't fit the normal um, um, concept of what you would think or perceive a smoking jacket to be. So we, we talk about this, or, you know, we've talked about this probably since the accounts come over the last few weeks. We, we firmly believe that there should be a more structured marketing system but in one breath, for one um, for one uh, challenge, they'll say, we want the design. And then when somebody does do their own design, they actually get marked down for that. And I thought Mia's smoking jacket at the end, yes, the brocade um, fabric was brilliant. It was a great choice. It was very, you know, luxurious. And the fact that she did the scallops, good on her. She, she, she went outside the box. It was, it was excellent. But we always knew who was going to win. I mean, just going back to, so um, obviously the pattern challenge was a bit of a, one thing that um, obviously Lauren was having a really, really, really bad week. And when she put that invisible zip in, now when you're doing invisible zips, it's important with a zip, trust me, baste the zip in first, mm -hmm. use pins. Mm -hmm. That's the quick way and you'll do it twice. So baste mm -hmm. the zip That's in. Fun. I use yeah. a fabric glue pen, just whip it down. It washes out. It's so much easier. It doesn't distort like pins do. I'm a great fan of basting everything with a little bit of fabric glue pen. Well, the other thing about basting <laughs> is, it, as I've said throughout the weeks, pins distort the fabric. Um, basting or gluing keeps everything very, very um, flat. Now, the other thing as well, when you put a zip in, it doesn't matter what type of zip it is, you place the zip in, but you need to close the zip and look at what's happening with the zip before you've stitched it in. Then you know whether or not one side needs to move up ever so slightly and then you adjust it. And then once you're, it's looking all lovely and nice, then go in with the machine. I mean, mm -hmm. we were taught at college. I mean, we, we, we've, we get really bad bits of behavior. <laughs> and for instance, 
zip feet and things like that didn't really sort of like exist so much in when I was at college. So literally you had to open the flap, the teeth of the invisible zip, and you had to place the foot on. So the needle was in the groove and that's how you stitched um, your zip in, in the very end. Um, but obviously you've got these feet now that actually make it easier, which mm. hold that part apart to stitch in that little ditch. Mm. Um, but she had an absolute mare. And the other thing is, do not be tempted to try and put, rip a zip out. You might be able to get away with it with wool or cotton dependent mm. on the weight but as mm -hmm. a rule of thumb don't do that because she literally just tore through mm -hmm. and it's I'm such a that. yeah mm -hmm. I, I really felt I really did feel for I mean she's pressure she, and also with because of the fabric choice she, she did she was unpicking so much black on black I mean I've just mm -hmm. now joined the the I've now just joined the glasses group now 43 mm -hmm. because I've done so much close-up black mm -hmm. on black work um but bless her. Now we're going to move can on. Can I just can I just oh, yes. before you before you move on? Yes. As Asma's been criticized a couple of times about bouncy seams. Now I've been watching her really closely because yes, she is very skilled. However, I noticed on the last challenge, she does actually have a hand through the sewing machine and she pulls the fabric through. So she's been pulled up with it twice about the bouncy seams. I disagreed with Patrick about the, the pressing. However, she's still pulling through now anybody who's sewing at home whether you're sewing cotton or whatever you don't put your hand through the machine particularly and you don't want to be pulling it through those those teeth on that machine are going to feed that through lovely and if you have a walking foot if you're struggling use your dual feed or your walking foot and that's going to, to creep it through so asma will continue to have bouncy seams if she continues to to do what she's doing she gets away with it often because the fabric is heavy enough to be able to disguise those bouncy seams. But you so see I this a lot. I think you see this a lot on on TV shows. You know, especially when you watch the design shows and they're making curtains and they're pulling that fabric through. The machine mm -hmm. knows what it's doing. The machine is set mm -hmm. up for that stitch. Mm -hmm. Let the feed dogs do its own thing, mm -hmm. and exactly. it will take it through. Whether mm -hmm. you're working mm -hmm. with quilts, cushions, curtains, or clothes. That's mm -hmm. what the sewing machine is for. Mm -hmm. She's really, it's really a bad thing to, to show. I think it's teaching people who are learning when they're watching this program is teaching them bad habits. And it's also teaching them um, fear of zips. I mean, poor Lauren, I know she had a mare, but she was using a concealed zipper foot. But what I was taught to do as well is before you use the concealed zipper foot is you you take your iron and you kind of fold the teeth of your zip away slightly and bring the iron up to it. So it's even more uncurled so you can get even closer to it. Now, I was told about doing that with a lady who came to Festival of Quilts and told me I was doing my zips all wrong. And that made a big difference. But people get the idea that zips are scary and they're not. It's using good technique and it's using mm -hmm. the right feet. Mm -hmm. The other thing with a zip as well is what I find easier is I set the zip in, but I don't sew the side seam up. So mm -hmm. what I do is I sew the zip in, making sure that's done. I lay it flat, making sure that, you know, your hem isn't stepped too much. Then I will then bring the sew machine from the zip end down to the hem so that mm -hmm. I'm so that I avoid trying to get that um, bumpy mm -hmm. bit, um, which is mm -hmm. all which is always that which is always going to happen. If if you haven't got the that completely uh, the two um side seams completely flat then mm -hmm. um you're not going to do i mean in the industry when you were um when someone picked up on the thing about you know tony oh, and not actually sewing in his <laughs> um you know lining by um hand sewing it i don't actually see why there was this big need to hand sew it in in the mm -hmm. commercial industry um no one sits there and hand sews it in a, a couturier will um mm -hmm. but a commercial um, factory, they pull it all under and then they pop the zip and then they pull the zip back to through. Mm -hmm. It's all machine done. So it's a bit of a mixed bag. So we will move on to the transformation challenge, yes. which yes. always um, moving on. <laughs> yes, which always, always, always. You'll need to tell your hecklers Skip. in the background there. Skip. Kim, uh, um, I know. To do one. Um, 
so I understand from um, obviously Esme. Um, now, the interesting thing is, is that uh, one of Esme's fashion partners for the brand that they started all the way back in the, the 70s, Willie Walters, actually was one of my tutors at Central St. Martin's. So I know Willie quite well, um, who's a lady. Um, and um, yeah, it's all a bit, I can understand them going back to this. And I thought, actually, this transformation challenge actually has a bit of provenance and it actually makes a bit of sense because Esme and you know her fashion um brand did that way back when so I thought it was interesting from that point of view and then it all sort of started and I I then just thought it's just not um I don't think repurposing shower curtains is necessary I mean from my own personal experience our own shower curtains at home there is nothing I would apart from using it as you know sheeting for when we're decorating or something like that there is nothing else I would repurpose with my shower curtain because when you want to replace it there's a reason for that so I'm not, I wasn't too too enamored by it and I I really liked Tony's and I liked it because he had looked at the optical illusion and I thought, actually, that's actually really clever and a really nice, clever play. Whereas I wasn't, I wasn't a big fan of, um, I wasn't a big fan of Lauren's, and I certainly wasn't a fan of Esme's. But um, what did you think, Sarah? Well, for a start, I kind of when they said high fashion, mm. it's like, how <laughs> do you, what do you define high fashion as? And high fashion to me is sort of haute couture, which do you get that out of plastic? I, I I don't know. But also the pictures that they brought up of Esme's, they were really cool. They were cool shower curtains. What they actually gave the contestants, most of them were clear and didn't have much of interest on them to start with. But I really liked Tony's and he came last. You know, and again, I think, mm, is it? I don't know, but obviously they didn't know it was it was Tony's. But I also rather liked Vicky's. I thought with the yellow, I, I loved the structure of it and the and the big shoulders. And I could actually think of that being a bit more haute couture. And but when you say oh, you've got to do high fashion, everybody's sitting there going, "Well, what is what is high fashion?" And Mia said, "Oh, it shapes." That was the closest we got to a definition of what they were actually expected to produce. But my mm -hmm. favourite was, was Vicky's. And I thought uh, asthma zip on the back was terrible. It was like, what was going on with that zip? It sort of bowed out and kind of wobbled. And again, it just, it. <laughs> but they gave her first place. Yeah. But then I wasn't... That's... Well, you see, the thing is, so for instance, if you hark back, this is where I get my fashion nonsense brain on so if you hark back to the um the 60s you've got um massive brands that were pushing boundaries it was all about space age and about free love and everything like that so you've got brands such as Paco Rabanne for instance um that he famously did a dress with um bottle tops that were all chain mailed together um but he also did like Mary Quant and also Bieber they did a whole series of things that were you know the see-through sort of like trench coat max which if you like kind of would be like shower curtain-esque but it was all piped and it was all what have you so it it has got a big fashion nod and in terms of like what high fashion is I think saying just generally shapes mm isn't really a definition um no. but bless her she did say a few weeks ago when it was the 90s that she wasn't even born then um so um I'm not going to take too much lead from <laughs> from that <laughs> comment at all um but um again I'm just not a real big fan of the transformation challenges um I know that from um people's um comments and things like that that um they're not they don't really understand why it's in there in the middle yes it's a bit of fun and yes we have this debacle every week about whether or not it's an entertainment show or people should be learning from it and and, and what have you um 
thought yeah. this was the, the most interesting transformation this season. I think because all of the items, I mean, even Tony with his little modesty bands, I mean, if you had something on underneath, they were all wearable, which compared to making things out of loo roll, uh, loo, loo seats. And, and next week, I think they're actually using sponges by the looks of it. And, you know, how how useful is how useful is that cleaning products? That's from the clip that I saw anyway. But I thought at least this time they produced things that you could actually wear outside and not get arrested for being yeah. a complete weirdo so uh -huh. um as transformations go it's probably been my favorite but again i just don't see the point of it because i don't know what they're testing what exactly are they testing what exactly are they trying to tell people um at home what it, what it I mean, it's 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 looking at upcycling and recycling, but they're not really doing that because most of the time they just produce something that you would never use that would go in the bin anyway. So upcycling things that you've got lying around the house, it's not doing that. It's just making it, cutting it up before you put it in landfill. Yeah, I mean, the, I think we, we seem to momentarily have lost Kim. She's obviously we'll ordering... We'll carry on. Exactly. Worry, she's Alistair. obviously ordering another magnum of champagne because uh, she's on her holidays in um, Scotland. Um, I um, think, so for instance, there is, if anyone hasn't tuned in or not a fan of RuPaul's Drag Race, there is a section in RuPaul's Drag Race which actually does do this as a challenge. And they're given a load of obscure things like beach balls tennis balls and what have you and each drag queen has to create an entire look on a catwalk using all of that product now when it's done on that program it makes perfect sense because it's all about creativity and them trying to project who their persona is through using different materials in this idea hello was the bar busy dear Yes, it was. But it's because I tried to put on mute and I just disappeared. I'm hitting buttons left, right and centre. So I'm not going to do that anymore. OK, just but leave have it alone. Listen. I'm just not going to touch anything. I just am in sit, Edinburgh. Sit, sit yeah. on your hands. I am. I'm sitting on my hands. Yes, yes. yes. That's, yes. that's what we'll do. So We, we know were... she actually sneaked to the bar. That was it. She just didn't want to see us I with wish. that... Uh... Well, I'm going to the bar in about five minutes. <laughs> oh, right. OK. <laughs> Well, we better we better move on then. So the um... can I just can I just say one thing? Yes. I know we've talked about it. First of all, that zip that Asma used is a bag zip. It's from Prim, specifically. And I love it. All, mm. Yeah. At, at end of sentence. And second of all, if they'd used a Teflon coated foot in their sewing machines, they wouldn't have had the problems. Let's move on to the the last one. So we move on to the main challenge, which then absolutely just threw me completely because we've gone from uh hollywood uh sort of like um icons Say hello. and then <laughs> hello, <laughs> hello. <laughs> is, just that just some, is that just some random stranger you've just um no this is not a random six stranger say hello <laughs> to my husband <laughs> oh hello mr solomon he can't he's hear you. Worse. He says he's being called worse. He can't hear you because he, I've got the earphones in. All oh, right. Okay. <laughs> so we're moving on to uh, the main challenge. Now, the, uh, as I was, um, was saying, this really confused me. So we had consistency from the pattern challenge. Then we had the transformation, which sort of linked in. And then suddenly we were making men's smoking jackets, which to me just didn't seem... Th out of everything they could have chosen, I would not have homed in and ch and chosen that as a as a challenge. It was a very great. It was a very 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 good challenge in terms of how they were getting it to fit, which I will go on to in a little second because I've got quite a lot to say about all of that. I think I think I know exactly what you're going to say. <laughs> yes. Well, there were some absolute disasters, and there were some um quite um quite nice um things anyway before i put my two penneth worth in uh well um sarah what did you think okay well um i must admit i was quite taken with Nikki's tuxedo i know it was very short and as it came down the catwalk i went yeah that even i know that's too short and that's not just because i've got that velvet fabric 
I used to stock it here and I made some very beautiful cushions for my sofa with her velvet with the birds on it. And I just saw it and went, oh, matches my cushions. Oh, she could, but she's obviously got exquisite taste. But I really liked the way she'd put that together. It's just, as she said, as they pointed out, it was too it was too short. But she did say that when she was fitting the the sleeve. She said, that, I, I don't know how long this should be, but it did kind of look like she so he was wearing, you know, like his his little brother's jacket or something. It was a bit tight on there. But I have to say, style wise, I really loved that. And I love Myers as well. And I think you, you touched on this earlier, Kim, about the scalloped edge. Mm -hmm. I thought that was really creative. And I loved it when she just said, Oh yeah, you just draw around a bowl. <laughs> yeah, make make good use of what you've got lying around your house. But um I'd actually written down before we even went into the challenge, I wrote Asthma gonna win. Laura going home. Uh, Lauren, rather, going Lauren home. yeah, yeah. It was like I, I, I knew that even before we were going into that final challenge that that asthma was going to win. Um, but even it didn't fit. It didn't fit. It didn't fit her model. It and, and it's a it's a fitting challenge that last one. And that's what it's all about. So um, I did think that again, Tony. I know he had problems with his pockets, but he pushed himself. He challenged himself with those pockets. Okay, with the corduroy, it split, and I could just see it. And I was going, oh, God, Tony, your pockets. Um, but everybody else mm -hmm. went the easy route. They went the patch pocket. I mean, Lauren even got hers on. No, it wasn't Lauren. Who got who got it upside down? I know um, that yeah, was it Lauren. It was Lauren. Mm -hmm. She got one of her pockets upside down, so the nape, it looked like a different colour. But, um, I mean... I personally would have put Tony higher than asthma. Because all that. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Because asthma's didn't fit. And that's the whole point of this. Mm -hmm. You know, it's not about it's it's not so much about design and whatever. This is a fitting challenge. And if it doesn't fit, you should be out of the running completely. Mm -hmm. You know, um, so. I felt a little sorry for him again, but I do feel like they just don't they just don't like him he just hasn't done badly but enough to go home yet the other thing is is if they'd use the vlieseline um edge fix as well on the back of the welt top pocket or one of the vlieseline tapes then that would have given them a better chance on that welt pocket because welt pockets aren't as difficult as they made out when they were describing it in the judging process in fact yeah. even i can do a welt pocket and I, do them on quite, cotton. I, yeah. I do them on bags and things because they're really yeah. effective, but it does mm. have to be stabilised. But then yeah. it does make me question where these people are learning their skills, because, as I said, I'm self-taught uh, with my dressmaking, but I'm self-taught by YouTube. So I learn about all these products by watching the experts, by watching you, Kim, or by watching, you know, people saying on the telly or watching YouTube videos. Or if, it's, if I want to sew satin, I will always go, how to sew satin mm -hmm. and that gives you all of those tips so i'm surprised that people don't know about these products mm -hmm. because there mm -hmm. are so many videos out there and uh, that wasn't available when we were learning mm -hmm. our trade you know so many videos out there that will teach you about these products i mean Vis Vis viseline have got so many little video clips all over YouTube for you to watch so that you can learn about these things. So I'm always surprised that they don't know in that last challenge when they can choose whatever method they want. They're not restricted by a pattern. They can choose their own products, their own stabilizers, you know, whatever they want to use. And they often don't. Well, I, think... I, I come from it from a very, very different point of view. So for instance, um, the, the jack now one thing to point out sarah you mentioned that the um that vicky's jacket was very very short now they did mention and this is <clears> the only <throat> challenge because obviously there were so many pieces to it that they were able to pre-cut all of their pattern pieces before yeah. so she was she was she was you know she was paddling up the river without a paddle on this one because literally she'd already cut it you can't then extend it um so but how can you pre-cut without knowing yeah. what size your model's going to be well because you could have ended up with a short model a tall one yes but this um, goes back to the the whole reason why they've got paper pat that choosing a paper pattern if it's a skinny fit which she will have chosen because that was very slim 
Um, mm. And in, in an actual fact, it 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 wasn't really a it re, it wasn't technically a smoking jacket because um, I've made so many of them on Savile tux, Row. For, they, they described yeah. it as a tux. Yeah. So, for instance, if they had to, what you everyone knows that you take your paper pattern pieces before you've mm. even cut the fabric, you have to adjust all the measurements and the pattern pages. Say if you bought a Vogue pattern or what have you, it always has a line in there which gives you the the to extend or to shorten or to do what have you. So she it was never going to work. So she's just gone off the model sizes and she's gone off maybe um a modern day pattern, and mm -hmm. it's it's really really slim. Um, so I don't think that was ever going to work for her just purely and simply because. She had already pre she had already pre cut it, and there's not a lot you can do once you've cut the fabric because you don't have more. You didn't. She didn't have more fabric with them. Going back to Tony's welt pockets now. the the easiest way to to do a welt pocket is once you've folded over your welts, is to line the pressed edges up together. Now you can either use a a large zigzag stitch on your machine, which is a holding stitch. And you close that before you lay it underneath and you've fused around before you cut into the things. And then the only bit is on the corners is where mm -hmm. you um, where you put a, a, a good line of um, stitching to hold it in place. Now, with Tony, if he had used the same material that he used on the collar, which was much finer, and used that to make the welt with some um, interfacing on the back of the welt, that would have given it its strength and he would have had no problems. But trying to make it out of corduroy, mm -hmm. and if you look at a corduroy jacket, unless it's a baby pin cord, no one makes welts out of that thickness. No, of, it's too and I mean, Fair dues, he put some cord on the back, but that was just to visually make it look because, I mean, how on earth? I mean, I, that wasn't just a tear that did that. I mean, they, were, they, weren't, they weren't actually lined up. And the thing is, the, the mouth on them, it wasn't even, it was never going to touch. The welts were far too small for the space he had cut. Um, I think he cut, I think he cut it away afterwards, didn't he? That's why they ended up so far apart because mm -hmm. he torn it. He cut the original off, so so there was now just too big a a gap to a, a gap to fill, and I think that made it look even worse. Yeah. But can I just say that yeah. before? I think what we've got to do, sort of in conclusion of this particular challenge, is we're picking all the the sort of negatives here. If you had it whereby. You think in five hours, yeah, we'll give it pre cut it. Let's think on the positives. Lauren would have done a considerably better job if she hadn't been under a time constraint. We know what the editing's like, we've already spoken to people, and I'm sure Deborah on our last one is going to tell us the same that the, the cameras are there waiting to jump in. Um, to, to, to find faults and to find when they have a crisis. Did you um, notice, though, on this show, you had some overhead shots as well? Mm -hmm. So I think they've got cameras in the ceiling, so they're actually able to watch them. They've got overhead cameras, so even mm -hmm. when people aren't aware of the cameramen walking past mm -hmm. them, they're still being watched. It's not something I'd want to do. No, no, no. I wouldn't put myself under pressure. But I think I think in fairness to them, whereas we don't necessarily think that asthma should have won, I think they all did a sterling job. And had they all been given a little bit more time to, to finish and to not be under that time pressure, maybe we would have seen better results. But it goes back to this is an entertainment programme. People want to see a crisis. They want to see somebody fall apart. The want to see mistakes and it's it is a shame from it where, where you know you're you've got a professional background alistair we're hobby hobby dressmakers and and it, it is just a shame that everything that we've talked about we'll always talk about those negatives but i wouldn't like to have to make it a smoking jacket tuxedo and fit it in five hours and having pre-cut it one would hope that they'd given the measurements of those models to those individual contestants so they could match them up. Now, somebody might have been a slim fit, but when they've been to the gym and they look fabulous, <laughs> and they've got mm. big muscles. So I do feel that sometimes the producers, the editors, the showmakers are setting some of the content or all of the contestants up. Up for failure. For fall. 
Mm. So I do, I do think that yeah, asthma was always going to win. I had that uh, exactly the same. Um, we, we'll never know who was second, third, fourth, and fifth in that. Uh, sorry, second, third, fourth. Yeah, in fifth in that particular challenge. I feel I think they all did really, really well. And I, I think my favourite, my favourite in the end was Vicky's. I did absolutely mm. love Vicky's with that. That's because you like the fabric. That, but that's because it's my personal choice and mm -hmm. that's part of the problem with the judging isn't it mm -hmm. that's mm -hmm. that's very much what we're looking at it with mm -hmm. but to produce mm -hmm. something like that in five hours personally I think they should have given them six hours and let them cut their pieces mm -hmm. but as we say they do shrink the time down mm -hmm. they don't give them enough time because it's an entertainment show but mm -hmm. um the fact that we've made it, they've made it now to the to the semi-finals is it's yeah. brilliant. I'm very excited to see what comes next. Well, technically, I actually thought that um, Asthma's actually technically was be what was beautifully sewn. You that that is, that is the just, piping was lovely. The, the piping was lovely. She was working with um, velvets. It was it was um, putting in really. I mean, I thought the braid was a little too chunky um, for what it, it should have been a little bit smaller, um, but. Um, I thought when you visually saw it, I mean, yes, the shoulders didn't actually fit. And with a smoking jacket, yes, it's supposed to be it's supposed to be a little bit more roomy. Like Patrick said, a bit like a posh dressing gown. That's the whole point of it. The problem with that is that even Patrick will be guilty of this. The, the modern take on men's clothes, because I hate it when I go into a store now, because whenever I try a suit on, everything is super skinny or it's it's muscle fit or it's this, that and the other. Now, one thing is I'm not super skinny and I don't have muscles. Um, so I am i don't fit into any of those categories. Um, so having a nice fitting suit, for instance, Asma's here was bulging ever so slightly. So the, mm -hmm. the actual, um, and thank God she didn't put the, um, the shoulder pad in. Mm -hmm. I, think that, I think the challenges are getting a little bit more too challenging in mm -hmm. terms of for what they've got to produce in that hour um i mean when you're doing a structured jacket that's a that's a couple of days work to just exactly you know, make it nice you can't knock that yeah. out in, in five hours um but i i commend i commended them all lauren had an absolute car crash i mean all of the balance of one of the sleeves was coming all over. She was catching the sleeves in it. It was just, I think she had just given up. I know the, mm -hmm. the, the fabric choice, yeah. I think, was was a nice choice, but I think it was just, it, j the whole thing, I think, just overwhelmed her, I think. Mm -hmm. um, a nice, um, I didn't agree with Patrick's mm -hmm. comment when he said about putting in the binding, mm -hmm. because Patrick should know that in a linen jacket, what we do is we put a buggy in, we, we call it a buggy, which is a half lining which crisscrosses along the back and this, the sleeves are lined. And then the rest of it to keep you cool is all beautifully trimmed inside on the seam allowance. So yeah. in actual fact, that's not actually unheard of. It's actually, it is actually a thing, but he was sort of turning his nose up that it wasn't lined. Well, lining does hide a multitude of sins um, mm -hmm. and she was putting it all out there. I always wish she had done, I would like to have seen a little bit more of um, Lauren because I have enjoyed watching her and some of the things that she's actually done. Um, I would have liked to have seen a little bit more of her, but sadly she was the one to leave. So did everybody agree with the decision? Um, yes, I think so. I think, yeah, yeah and let's, let's look forward to the semi-final. Let's see what happens next week and, uh, and look forward yeah. to the semi-final and see, see where we go. And let everybody, everybody who's at, watching... Uh, sorry. Let everybody who's watching this now... Um, you you tell us your your comments and, and give us your feedback because obviously you've just listened to what what we think, which I think is interesting. It's lovely to hear other people what they think at home. I think to, for any of them to make it this far is absolutely astonishing. I mean, what they have to what they have to go through um, mm -hmm. emotionally and mentally. I think I would be a weeping wreck after week three. Um, I think the pressure that they're put under is immense, and the fact that they managed to produce anything. And I, my heart did go out to to Lauren because she just had such an awful day. It was mm -hmm. like everything she touched 
went wrong. And we have days like that, you know, Alistair, in our studios and in our sewing rooms at home, where sometimes you just have to put it down in the corner and walk away, maybe have a cup of tea and a biscuit. But they don't have that. They don't have that ability. They're not able to do that because of the time constraints mm -hmm. and that pressure of having everyone watching you. So mm -hmm. fair play to them. Yeah, yeah. I, yeah. I, I, and yeah, you're you're quite right. I mean, sometimes it's better to actually completely walk Excuse away me. and come back to something the 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 day after, and actually, um, then you've seen it with fresh eyes. Because the more that you're concentrating and you're, the more that you're trying to figure something out. If you take a big break away from it, it will work. So anyone that's sewing at home, that is the top tip. So when you're frustrated mm -hmm. and when you're doing what have you, put it down and come back to it the day after, because the next day is a different day. You wake up refreshed and then you'll look at it with fresh eyes. It's like when you're trying to find a particular mm -hmm. earring or a ring that you think you've lost and you're, you're tearing the house apart to find it. And then lo and behold, mm -hmm. the next morning, suddenly, or that evening, just as you're going to bed, it's staring at you in the face on a place that you, you have looked in, but it's not. So mm -hmm. now who do we think at this stage, who do we think is going to win? Now, do you think that they're going to keep it really sort of drama and they've edited it in a way that we think it's going to be asthma or... Is that what the general consensus is? So, Kim, who do you think is going to win? I think it's going to be Asma, which is she's a beautiful sewer. Uh, I think Mia should win, personally. I'd love to see a man win, but who knows? Who knows? And Sarah? I, so, I'm with you, Alistair. I wonder if they've edited it that way so that we all go, that we're all looking at it going, you know, Asma's got it in the bag, and then next week she has a complete meltdown. And then she, she's off home. I, I I think that's quite possible because we're on what season nine now, and we've seen that before. We've seen people mm -hmm. who won garment mm -hmm. week after week after week, and then suddenly, right at the end, mm -hmm. they've just crashed and burned. Yeah. Maybe the pressure yeah. gets too much to them. So I, I mean, I think Tony's got it in him if he can keep himself um stop making these silly mistakes yeah. you know the, the things that that let him down because i think he's got a good eye and i like his use of fabrics i mean i've never seen anyone sew with scuba so much in my life uh, but now i'm thinking i need to go and buy some scuba let's have a look but um i'd like to see him win and i think mia as well she's got a good eye and she's got um a, a, a very distinctive style and mm -hmm. and i like her heart mm. but who knows okay. I'm just going to put myself on the fence and I'm just going to say, I probably think it is asthma, but in actual <laughs> fact, I think any of them could win. And yeah. that's where I'm going to leave it. Um, yeah, because yeah. I don't think any of us have got any idea the way that everything's edited. Yeah. So the last thing that we have to do is thank Sarah very, very much for um, yes, thank you. her time in her very busy schedule. Um, and... Pleasure. And thank you very much for all of your comments and, and, and things like that. And next week, <clears throat> we will be joined by, um, now, I'm going to call her Becky Cole, but it could be um, Becca Cole, Rebecca Cole, or however she wants to abbreviate it, but I've always just called her Becky. So we've got mm -hmm. Becky Cole from Sensory um, Sewing um, joining us next week. Now, um, Anyone that doesn't know, Becky actually worked on behind the scenes on one of the Great British Sewing Bees. So it's going to be very interesting to find out what her role was and to actually find out what the dynamics actually are from the production point of view, not a contestant mm -hmm. point of view, but the production point of view. Mm -hmm. So, Sarah, thank you, thank you, thank you so much. Thank you. And, um, we'll see you I later. will look forward to seeing you in the green room soon, both of you. <laughs> See you soon. Bye. All right. Bye. Take care. Bye.